on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. Let's run through the seven industries where blockchain technology is most badly needed. TunnelBear is the simple VPN app that makes it easy to browse the web privately and enjoy a more open and secure internet experience. Try TunnelBear for free by checking out the link in the video description below. Hi there guys and welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I am your host, Chris Coney. Today is the 2nd of February, 2017. So let's get right into the market roundup before we go through the top seven industries that need disrupting by blockchain technology. Cryptocurrency prices come courtesy of coinmarketcap.com. We've got a big double digit winner today. We have Digix Dow up 11.94%. Granted, that's only on $9,000 worth of trading volume, but it puts a Digix Dow token at $11.21. And it's right down there in 18th position as the most capitalized coin. Now, Digix DAO, they're going for a blockchain based token. I believe Digix DAO is built on Ethereum and they're going for a gold backed uh, blockchain based token. So, check out Digix DAO. They've got two different tokens one represents the physical bullion and one represents a share and a dividend in the network, I believe. So, go check them out. And right below them, as the 19th most capitalized coin, is today's biggest loser, which is Gollum. Down 3.31% today, putting a Gollum token down at, well, 2.7 cents per token. And again, that's only on $37,000 worth of trading volume. It's not a hell of a lot, but it still moved the price down by 3.31%. And as we've been saying recently, because Gollum has been appearing both in the biggest winner and the biggest loser category quite frequently over the last two weeks, um, Gollum are going for the old, you know, rent out the spare capacity of your computer and then monetize it on the blockchain through machine learning, 3D graphics rendering, whatever, you know, big decentralized cloud-based computing type system. So like I say, it's not exactly like Ethereum because it's not about decentralized apps. It's purely... You, you donate your spare computing resources and then that gets monetized as just collective computing power. In fact, Gollum have a, a decentralized sort of mining pool situation going on, but I think it's still in alpha. So I um, we can't really tell you much about that yet because I haven't scrutinized it or tested it to any particular extent. So that's that in terms of the biggest winner and the biggest loser. Let's hop over to the Bitcoin price chart and see what's going on over there. So thanks to BitcoinWisdom.com for providing this data and for Bitstamp for providing the actual price feed itself. Now, I hate to say, blow my own trumpet, but I did say that that uh, ascending triangle, once it broke out, was going to cause an upward move. And if you remember yesterday, I did a calculation and my prediction is that it's going to run to $1,124. That's going to be, in my opinion, the top of this run before it takes a breath again and comes back down. As you can see right now, I've drawn a horizontal gray line at $1,000, which that's, that is very psychologically significant. It has three zeros in it, and it's a historical number. You know, recently there was all that ooh about it breaking 1,000, and uh, that's what actually, it, what did it last? It lasted three or four days before it crashed right back down again to around 900. And as you'll see down at the bottom here, the volume is picking back up again as there was a bit of a break there. I think there was a weekend days and then there was also Chinese New Year. So that probably dampened the volume a little bit and why the candles were pretty small. But two days ago, big old spike. What was that one? Two days ago, it was a 4.78% gain. Yesterday's was 2%. And then today we're still on the run. And we have sort of a, a, a look, well, it's got a long tail on it. So that's uh, bullish so far, but again, it's still forming, still a good 12 or 13 hours of the day to go in terms of the British time. So that candle's got a way to go yet. So my prediction remains the same. 1124 is the target. Let's see if we can get there. Let's take a quick stop over at Segregated Witness on the, light, on the Lightning Network. I mean the Litecoin Network, 
This is litecoinblockhalf.com forward slash segwit.php. And this is the counter to say when the, there's the block number right there. It's, was it 1,145,088? That is the block where the segregated witness uh, will start polling, signaling to see if the Litecoin miners want to switch to SegWit. And check out the nice SegWit logo that this fellow is um, Albert Droz Photo. I think that's his Twitter handle. Yes, it is. Designed this here SegWit logo. I quite like this block thing he got going on because that's a very good visualization of the blockchain. They, these are two blocks and they're both linked together. And that's like where a new block refers to the previous block's hash, which is how come they're all chained together. I think that's quite clever. So that designer kind of conceptually understands blockchain technology and structure. So anyway, we've still got, according to this, roughly 22 hours to go before this starts to poll. So here we go, SegWit minor support is still at 0%, but as once this countdown, once this block number is reached, rather, we will see that number changing, and who knows what's going to happen. In terms of the news then, I have turned to The Merkle. TheMerkle.com. It says seven industries that will be disrupted by blockchain technology. And it's got will with a capital W. Not quite sure why that is. Now this article starts with number seven and then it ends with number one. But I personally don't think that they are suggesting that this is a priority order of any kind. Having read the seven already myself, I think it would be very difficult for me to put these in any particular order. If I if I had to, I probably could, but since they can all be worked on at the same time by lots of different development teams around the world, there's no real need to take an either or approach. So let us begin. So the first one then is education. It says plagiarism and fraud haunt academia, as more often than not, it's easier to take shortcuts than to do the whole thing. Once again, blockchain technology can prevent people from saying they did something that they did not do whether we're talking about a simple assignment or a whole degree. Now, being an educator and a businessman, I absolutely agree and support this one. I have a fairly grim view of socialism and communism and therefore believe that individuals should succeed based on their own merit. I also happen to believe that people who succeed on their own merit, when it's free from force, like forced taxation and so on, they're often generous enough to fund the private charities that in turn take care of the genuinely unfortunate people who can't afford or can't function in the free market due to an illness or a disability, okay? Now, I regularly donate some of my business profits to causes that I believe in. So no, capitalism is not evil. Forced taxation and confiscation of wealth to fund wasteful social programs is evil. So there's my kind of political attitude, if you want, combined with my economic attitude. So moving on to number six, it says elections. The use of a blockchain for voter registration and electronic vote counting can mean democratic elections will always be as safe and as fair as possible. By authenticating users using their identities, keeping track of votes and keeping everything available for the public, while allowing people to verify no votes were altered, this type of technology could create a remarkably reliable online voting system. So with that, I'll say that a disagreement of opinion can only exist in the absence of hard evidence. So all the controversy before and after the US election is based on a lack of consensus. So there are different groups who have different versions of reality that they believe to be the truth. And the reason this is able to continue is because while there is hard data and hard evidence one way or another, it's not public, it's not transparent, it's not easily accessible as a blockchain voting system would be, right? So blockchain-based consensus is a system for agreeing on the truth, which then everyone builds on as a basis going from there forwards. So that's why in terms of elections, a blockchain-based voting system would be absolutely key. Okay, number five then is telecommunications. It says, last year, a distributed denial of service attack on a domain name system provider, DynaDNS, took down some of the internet's biggest websites, such as Twitter, Reddit, and Amazon. It says, as a matter of fact, there are already startups working on solutions. For example, Nebulous is developing a blockchain-based DNS system on Ethereum. Now, I honestly think that Namecoin was worthy of a mention here as another potential solution, 
I do, however, think that Nebulous is more likely to succeed because they're building it on Ethereum and they're leveraging all that computing infrastructure, the community and the support system and all that kind of stuff. Having said that, though, there is no reason why both Namecoin and Nebulous couldn't exist. Namecoin could manage to manage the .bit domain names, and then Nebulous could manage their set of domain name extensions that that they are working with. No, no reason why they couldn't coexist. Number four, then, is healthcare. Cybercriminals have been known to specifically target hospitals and other healthcare facilities with ransomware. Because these are healthcare facilities, they must pay the ransom in order to access patient data and keep on saving lives. Their data is extremely valuable, but their tech infrastructure often lacks steadiness. So first of all, locking medical data that is needed to care for patients is pure evil. However, evil's not going anywhere, so that's not the solution. The solution is rather to make evil powerless by upgrading our own defences. I've actually done a number of episodes on the medical data applications of blockchain technology. If you remember, I did one a while back covering the Gates Foundation initiating a project with Factum, which was great news to me. Now that episode was number 148, if you'd like to go back and listen to it. So moving on to number three, it's online music. People can now easily avoid paying for music, and that significantly reduces an artist's income. Several startups, such as Ujo Music, are already trying to bring blockchain technology to the online music industry. Now, I covered this recently too in my Music on the Blockchain episode. It was episode 194, where I talked about music being kind of a complex asset because it has so many contributors, and hence it has many rights holders to keep track of. And since this is such a huge opportunity, there are dozens of blockchain-based projects working on the music industry. I don't think that's a problem though, because once we have all this data in immutable online databases, it's much easier to connect them all together and share data in one great big, you know, uh, meta database, if you know what I mean. So then number two is auto insurance. There are hundreds of files and records that need to be kept and due to human error may be lost. Furthermore, peer-to-peer -peer auto insurance may become a possibility in the coming years. The way it would work is a pool of policymakers or policyholders would pay premiums on the same policy. As the shared policy ages and gains reputation, outside investors have the option of investing in that particular pool. Right, so not just car insurance, but insurance of all kinds could have blockchain technology applied to them. Right now, insurance is centralized. You know, we have a centralized pot of money, and it has to be centralized, so that it can be distributed to whoever wants to claim. Now, the insurance company makes huge amounts of profit on that, um, and the profit comes from the pot that isn't paid out as insurance claims. So it's big business. There's always more paid into insurance premiums than is taken out in claims. That's how the profit is able to be generated. So the question is, what if we insured each other? What if, say, a hundred people created like an insurance group where everyone paid some Bitcoin in every month and paid it into a smart contract, and then that money would be available if someone had a car accident? In that instance, the group could then inspect all of the evidence of the crash, photos, you know, eyewitness accounts and all that sort of stuff, and then they could vote on the insurance claim. Should we pay out? Do we believe this is a genuine claim? And if the answer is yes, job done. The smart contract pays out to the victim of the accident. And because in this circumstance, there's no big company spending money on administration, that's all money that remains in the pot for actual claims rather than disappearing on office expenses, salaries, paying dividends to shareholders, you know, all that sort of stuff. That's siphoning off the money. And last but not least, number one is finance. Financial institutions can significantly reduce costs and sustainably reduce fraud with the use of blockchain tech, as it creates a way to certify ownership and clear transactions much more efficiently than the current centralized system. The implementation of the ledger can actually affect pretty much every financial instrument out there, ranging from bonds to stocks. Now this is an application we all know very well. It was the original, the one and only application of blockchain technology that we know as cryptocurrency. But like it says here, a unit of currency 
is just the first financial asset that we can tokenize. All of the other financial instruments are next. So in conclusion then, there is one fundamental problem that needs to be solved for all of this to work. It's identity. How do we represent someone's unique identity in the digital world? How do we create a bridge between the two? And how do we create a digital signature that is tied to an individual person? Because without that, we can't rely on blockchain-based votes. We can't rely on blockchain-based deg degree certificates. We can't rely on any digital representation ever being used by a single unique individual. Now, as far as I know, this problem is yet to be solved. On the positive side, though, here is the core reason why I am so passionate about blockchain technology and why I do strongly support its application in all these different kinds of industries that we've talked about today. Once we have an indisputable record of the truth that cannot be changed, bribed, manipulated or destroyed, we will all be held accountable to ourselves. At long last, no one will be able to escape from taking personal responsibility for their life. There'll be no more cheating, no more shortcutting, no more stepping on someone else to get ahead. It will be a world at long last where the most successful people will be the ones who have earned it by doing the actual work. So thanks for joining me today, guys. If you liked this episode, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. Please leave me a comment below with some feedback and get subscribed. And please support the Cryptoverse and boost cryptocurrency adoption by going to cryptoversity.com forward slash podcast and becoming a patron. From just a few dollars a month, you can secure Cryptoversity's future, get unlimited access to all Cryptoversity courses, and access a private patrons-only chat group where you get direct access to me. That is all for today, guys. I will be back tomorrow with another episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.